Now that we're in substance designer, let's talk a little bit about how do we go about combining our normal maps and some of our other ones because we had two separate bakes, we really need to combine the data in order to get or use the most effective uh, generators for Substance Painter. So let's start off with, this, with our normal map or really let's talk about our setup here. What I have here is I imported these resources and I baked out from a low poly mesh. I actually have a couple of meshes. I did export out the brass high and low just in case. Uh, and I have this actual tambourine low and high. If we double click on this, we can actually see it from within this viewport. So what I did was is I took both of these and I just baked them down. And the way you do that is just right click, bake model information, and you choose what you want to bake. I've gone ahead and baked all this information already ahead of time so that we can just jump right in. Uh, you know, actually, no, let me go back to it. So you can, the way this works is you can bake height map information and then you can choose um, the actual resource file that you want to use. You can use a, a file or if you've already imported it into Substance, you can choose what you want to bake from. And just clicking on this plus, you have access to all of these baking maps. You have opacity map, which is brand new in Substance. Wow, what version are we are now? Four, four, six, right? So it's brand new in 4.6.1, I believe is when it came. 4.6 or 4.6.1. Uh, you have the thickness map that also came with that. That's for if you want to use, um, if you want to do like skin shaders and you want to see the thickness of the mesh um, to create some kind of emissive map. Uh, and then position, ambient occlusion, all your, your other bakers. Uh, something to note here is, is uh, what I did end up doing is, is you see how it says height map from mesh? You can actually choose to also do, actually let me add ambient inclusion, you know what, ambient inclusion, you can choose a normal map or you can choose from a baker. So then if you're, if you're actually baking a normal map, you can choose if it's available to, to use that. So then it'll bake the normal map and then use this ambient inclusion. The only thing is, is if I pull out our normal map, oh, we don't need a bent map. I do a normal map from mesh. Your order is extremely important. So I love to put normal map up front because it's normally dependent on the most. So if I want to use this and I want to do uh, actually who does ambient inclusion, if I want to use ambient inclusion, I can choose from previous baker. If if the normal map goes if the normal map comes later in the process, it actually won't bake correct. So make sure that you have things in order. So now let's, let's get to the meat and, and potatoes here. So what we really want to do is this, there are filters that you can create, but Substance Designer comes with some of these filters already here for you. And what we want to do is normal map combine. So I want to grab this normal map, check out our low poly resources, and I want to get this normal map, which if we plug it into our normal output, and then we have to actually tell it to view the viewport. So this is the normal map that, that we created here in Substance Designer. And I thought it, it came out pretty good, but you'll see what's missing if I open up this tambourine is, is we don't actually have this brass portion in here. And the reason for that is, is if we actually look at this map, it's not in here. And our normal mapper, our normal map combiner will allow us to combine the two together and then I'll put one format or one file. So I add that, I come into our bake low for our brass, and now we've combined it. And you can see it automatically updated in the actual output. So now you can see our normal map, although we, we bake them separately, now you can see we have a better bake, a better quality bake. And because we did them separate, we don't have to worry about uh, you know some of the collision that would have happened coming up from here and looking at this data. Now I'm going to go ahead now and, and do this for a, a few other things. Uh, I'm actually going to add a node and we're going to add a blend node. And what I want to start blending is some of our other maps, like our curvature map. Because once again, when we go into Substance Painter, we're not going to have these two combined. And so what we want to do is, is that we want to make sure that these are combined at this stage. Make sure we choose the right blending mode.
For this, you really want to, I know it's actually add, subtract. Uh, you want to play around and kind of make sure that this is actually the right value. Because your first thought might be to use multiply, but then you see the original values aren't the same. So we want to make sure we combine them while maintaining the original value. There you go. So if we double click, you can see these two values. Uh, you also have the ability to change the the, uh, the actual opacity if you want to blend just a little bit better. Something else we can also do is, because I'm not liking how we have these artifacts here, what we can actually do is, is we can take this and we can actually uh, mask it out. If I go ahead and I choose, first and foremost, I'm actually working in this incorrectly. Let's keep that relative to parent and make sure all of our images are relative to pairing. That way we can control the actual there you go. Because what we want to end up doing is we want to control the quality output. And if we have, so now you see some of these are still 24, but if we export them, we want, in view them, we want to make sure everything is being viewed at the same exact size. You know, you have to make sure that you set relative to output from the original as far early on on the tree as possible because then it's going to accept input. So relative to parent, and now everything is relative to what I set to the parent, which right now is at, um, 1024. But let's say I wanted to now combine these without all those artifacts. Well, what I did was I also baked out this SVG. So what I can do now is, is I can use these SVGs as masks so I can limit what we're actually using. So I'm going to go ahead and click on these and copy to a new file. And now we'll have this SVG file. And I'm going to do exactly what I just did here and make sure that it's relative to parent. Oops. All right, keep that relative to parent. Now something else I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and change both of these colors to white. Set this to grayscale. And that way we just have a mask that's just what we need. No color information necessary. And I'm going to go ahead and create another blend node and what this and I'm going to use this as our opacity and I'm going to pipe this into our foreground and now what we have is is we have it isolated to just where our our brass section is then I can go ahead and delete this node and plug this in here all right so I wasn't liking the results so I, I went ahead and actually did a few modifications and I'll walk you through these right now. So what I did was is I actually masked up, so I used this uh, this mask that we created and what I did was I actually masked off both sections. And what this is going to allow us to do then is, is to isolate both areas and then I, I piped them both into a new blend. So now we maintain, if I double click here and here, we maintain the same values now, without having a problem with combining them, and I set the actual combination to max or lighten if you're used to Photoshop. And now this gives us, so we have a normal map, we have our, our curvature map. I'm going to go ahead and do the same exact process for the other maps, just so that we have a straight one-to-one -one relationship with our maps. And then afterwards, we can take this into Substance Painter and talk about how we're going to use Substance Painter now to finish off our process.